What's up guys, it's Sneaker Clev and I am bringing you another episode in the Sneaker Vault series and today we are tackling a rather different kind of shoe, a collaboration in fact that takes one of the old classic Air Jordan silhouettes that we all know and love and gives it a unique creative overlay. I am of course talking about the Air Jordan 1 Lance Mountains. Now the Air Jordan 1 Lance Mountains are one of the more interesting collaborations that Nike has ever done, combining the silhouette from the Air Jordan 1 and giving it a unique spin with elements from their Nike SB line. Now Nike truly created something special here and I believe that this is one of the most interesting shoes that Nike has ever released. Releasing on the 7th of June 2014, this pair of shoes featured a rather special detail. But before we dwell into that, we must look at the man who the shoe is named after, Mr. Lance Mountain himself. Lance Mountain was born on the 13th of June 1964 in Pasadena, California and is a professional skateboarder and also an artist. Lance Mountain is seen as one of the more predominant skateboarders throughout the 80s, which is primarily due to his involvement with the Bones Brigade, which were a skating team who rode under the umbrella of the skateboarding company Powell Peralta. Mountain's job was mainly to compete in skateboarding tournaments and win championships home to the company, and he did so alongside other skating legends like Rodney Mullen and also the more famous skater Tony Hawk. We are not talking skateboarding on this channel, we are talking sneakers. And while today's skateboarding sneakers consist of mainly shoes from brands like DC and Vans, Mountain and a bunch of his friends love to use the Air Jordan 1 as their go-to sneaker when it came to skating. As you probably know, skateboarding consists of doing a bunch of cool looking tricks, but it is exactly these tricks which are just pure punishment for your kicks. While ordinary wear contributes to beating your sneakers to the ground, nothing accelerates that process quite like using them for skateboarding. And that's exactly why Mountain and his fellow skateboarders love the Air Jordan 1 so much. Not only did the shoe itself have great angle support because of its build, but the sturdy and premium quality that came with a basketball shoe made the Air Jordan 1 last just a little bit longer with Mountain than other shoes. And when I say a little bit, I really mean a little bit, because even though the shoes were sturdy, skateboarders still truly beat them to the ground, and in Mountain's case, his shoes were no exception. But despite this, Mountain had his own solution to the problem, and that was to mismatch the different ones that he had. Different tricks can put different tear pressure on each shoe, and that's why if either the left or the right shoe was completely worn down, Mountain would just take a different Jordan 1 for that foot. Mountain would usually wear Jordan 1s of different color on each foot and so would his fellow skaters, thus creating this mismatch between the colorways. And while some may find this weird or maybe even wrong, to Lance and his fellow skaters this was just a part of skating culture. It's not always about the oddly sanded kickflips, sometimes it's about the art. And Mountain surely put that into his shoes as well, because to help create a uniformity for the shoes and to help make his pair of shoes unique, Mountain would also spray paint both his mismatched Jordans in the same color. And this way Mountain managed to create a rather unique pair of Jordans who were truly his because he only used a thin layer of paint and only one layer. And with time some of the paint would eventually crack and of course fall off, thus creating a one of a kind pair of Air Jordans which were truly his. And I gotta tell you guys something before you maybe even get the idea to do this. While this may seem like a different and creative idea, I do not condone this kind of sneaker painting method today. Do not, I repeat, do not use this method just because you have a spray can lying around. There are better options if you want to paint your sneakers today and no, you are not being creative, you are being cheap and lazy. Okay guys, let's fast forward from the 80s and to the release of 2014 and take a look at the overall design of the shoe. Now, the Lance Mountains, as I stated earlier, released on June 7th in both the US and Europe. And since Nike were still very limited with shoes coming from Jordan brand back then, this shoe was very limited and sold out very quickly. The shoe released in both a seemingly black and white colorway with hints of red and blue. Pretty normal sneaker when you take a look at it upon first glance, but here's the thing that makes this shoe truly unique. 
Just like Lance used to paint his sneakers and making them unique by wearing them, which would result in the paint falling off, the Air Jordan 1 Lance Mountains do exactly the same thing. The layer of either black or white paint is rather thin, revealing an Air Jordan bread and royal underneath the paint itself. But despite it being thin, it's still enough to give the shoes its own special look, which can only be obtained by wearing the shoe thus making it a truly personal pair for the lucky owner. And this exact feature is why these shoes are seen as one of the more interesting releases from Jordan brand. The owner himself will in theory get a pair that is truly unique, a one of a kind pair that he can in every sense of the word call his own. But we don't all got time for that, so what many people do is actually speed up the color changing process by using acetone and getting rid of the paint themselves. And the sneaker community have mixed opinions about this, because on one side you have the more hardcore sneaker heads who believe that using acetone to remove the paint is an overall stupid idea, because it undermines the whole point of wearing the Lance Mountains, which is that you should wear the paint off by, you know, wearing the shoe. And on the other side you have those who don't want to wait for that distressed color look and want to take their social media pictures immediately with their distressed lance mountains. And you can guess for yourself which side I am on. And while it may seem cool that Nike took their time to honor a skating legend by releasing this kind of shoe, the skaters themselves don't seem very pleased with this shoe. And a bunch of them actually hate it. And here's the reason why. Nike SB is, as the name states, a shoe line from Nike made to appeal to the skateboarding crowd. And while the younger generation seems to enjoy their shoes, the older generation of skateboarders are not so pleased. Following the release of the Air Jordan 1 Lands Mountains, Nike launched a reopening party of the old LA courthouse, which has for a long time been regarded as one of the go-to spots for skateboarders. Nike had bought the place and renovated it for the next generation of skateboarders. And while many see this as a rather positive gesture, the old skateboarders see this and Nike SB itself as a corporate vulture trying to make a profit of skateboarding culture. Not to mention that skateboarders Eric Austin and Paul Rodriguez were both present to witness this awesome event and who also run under the Nike SB umbrella were shunned at this event for going corporate and supporting the so-called evil that is Nike. <laughs> So it's no one surprised that a shoe as awesome as the Air Jordan 1 Lens Mountains would be seen as another symbol of this evil. And now guys, we're at my favorite point in the video where I give my own thoughts on the shoe and I gotta be honest, I really do not care what old skater heads say, I love the shoe. And granted, it's mainly because it is made of the silhouette of the Air Jordan 1, which is my favorite Jordan of all time, but adding a feature like tearing paint make this shoe just something truly special. And I'm going to give you guys a little story about this shoe, because when I first began collecting sneakers I actually came across this shoe on eBay. I had bought about like two Jordans up until this point and I saw this from a British seller for the insane price of about £150 which is about a little over $200, an insane steal, and it was even a DS pair, and I could have went for it, but I didn't, and here is why, because I didn't know a lot about Jordans back then, and when I searched for the name on Google, it only gave me those distressed colored pictures, and with that Nike SB box, I thought I was either looking at a the wrong shoe or that it was a fake. So it wasn't until after the auction that I realized that the reason why the Google images and the eBay images didn't match up was because I was looking at a clean DS pair with the color still intact. So yeah, I probably took the biggest L of my life very early in my sneaker career, but I mean, what can you do? That That's just how it is sometimes. But all in all, it's a great shoe and I appreciate what Lance Mountain did back in the 80s so that we can enjoy this awesome shoe today. And also, I don't know if it's just me who has been binge watching a little bit too much of The Office lately, but I think that Lance looks a little bit like a skateboarding Steve Carell. I mean, <laughs> I really hope it's not just me. But anyway, that's what I have for you guys. I really hope you liked the video. Leave a thumbs up if you thought so, and also leave a comment with your own thoughts on this magnificent shoe. And remember to subscribe for more sneaker history. I will see you next time.